What up, it's your boy Lil New, and I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Good Bastard. Gang. Free my brodies out the county, they cash out to stump them out. No, I hate the type of bitch that's trying to post me, bitch, get out. I ain't need. All right, y'all, so we got Lil New jumping off the porch with us today. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. How you feeling? I'm feeling amazing. What you been up to while you out here in Atlanta? Just running around, handling business, music stuff. <laughs> you, your ass is funny as hell. Yeah, I'm for real, music stuff. <laughs> Um, so we're going to go a little bit into your background because I know you're from the east side of Chicago. So let's talk about, what you, how were you growing up? How was I? Yes. I always been like the smartest out the crowd. Like, really? I always been advanced, more advanced than everybody my age. I never really hung with nobody my age besides like my big brothers and they all like two, three years older than me. So in school, how were you? In school? Yeah. I was bad, but I wasn't bad at the same time. I was bad to a... Uh, like, I just be doing stupid stuff. But I was good at the same time to like, I never disrespected older people. Like, if you was older than me, you could have been wrong. I'm still going to show you that respect. That's just how my OG raised me. Like, Right. So how would you describe, like, the environment that you were around growing up? The environment? Mm -hmm. Straight street. Like, and when I say street, I ain't talking about regular street. Like, I'm talking about, like, everybody in my household in the streets, nobody work a job. I ain't, I don't think my mama worked a job until she was right now, 40. Really? 45, yeah. So how does she feel about your music career right now? She, at first she was like, you just doing some shit. <laughs> then I had her ass 40,000 in blues and she like, you really been turned into a rapper. Yeah, so she, she rock with it right now. And then I, I make music for her type shit. Like, I don't be, she be mad because I don't be sending her all my music, but mm -hmm. my mama a gangster, but I still don't like her hearing everything I'm talking about because I still be trying to be her, her son, you know? So I make music, certain music for her so she can vibe to it. Because I know she older, she don't want to hear kill, kill, bang, bang all day. So yeah. I be making certain type of music just for her. So with the environment that you grew up in, what would you say were, well, actually with the environment that you grew up in, how would you say you really decided to take like a different route when it came to, you know, your family being in the streets? Really just, um, my mama, she always like showed me the consequences. Like I still, I took another route, but I still didn't take another route. Cause I mm -hmm. still was just, you don't know you being bad. You just running around just doing stuff that everybody else doing. You really don't know you being bad. I ain't know I was being bad until I went to jail. And when you go to court, you seeing niggas getting booked for, uh, running red lights and stuff and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You be like, I do this shit every day. This, this illegal. So it took me to go to jail for real to like really see like, oh damn, what we doing is wrong and they yeah. really trying to give us a lot of years for this shit. So what happened with you going to jail? How old were you? Shit, I first got booked. I first got booked when I was 12. 12? Yeah. What was you doing at 12? At 12, so look. You know how you order a phone? I stayed in like a mini project. Uh -huh. So I ordered a phone and I always been like a park district kid. So I called one of my coaches, like, I just ordered my phone and sent it up there. I had on, like, I had on all black, and some niggas I knew had just robbed somebody. But it wasn't me, though. So when I popped yeah. out the crib, and I always go through the back, I popped out the crib. Mm -hmm. The blue and whites was coming down, the, uh, coming down the alley. I'm walking. They snatched me up. They grabbed me. I'm like, man, fuck I do. So they went and took me uh, to, the, to this Mexican lady. And they had like pointed us out. She was like, it was him, 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 him. And she pointed me out. But the whole time, I'm knowing like, damn, my mama finna fuck me up. Ooh, <laughs> even if I didn't do it, she still finna fuck me up. Uh -huh. But I knew my coach number by heart. So like, I had my coach come get me from the juvenile center. All that shit. I ended up going to court about that shit. And she still didn't even end up hearing about it until like a year later or two years later. Dang, so they still made you go to court even though you was like falsely accused of some shit? Yeah, I was still falsely accused and so, all that, but the, everything got dropped though. So you had to go to court and was they trying to explain the story of why they picked you up and you was like, I didn't do none of that? They was. I'm in the back of the car, I'm telling them like, bro, I'm trying to go get my phone. <laughs> so whole time, I'm talking hella shit, I'm like, bro, I got on a book bag with some, with some, uh, with some uh, schoolwork in the back. I'm like, bro, why the fuck would I be committing a crime with schoolwork with my name on? They tell me, they like, you wouldn't believe the shit criminals do. They was just making excuses. So then I'm thinking I'm finna go home. So they like, all right, we probably finna take you home. Ooh, ooh. They, and they, didn't, they didn't take me home, but I was finna make them take me to go get my phone. Mm -hmm. I ain't end up getting my phone until the next day. And I, it was so hard 
like going through that shit and not trying to tell my OG because my OG against it and day she gonna understand but mm -hmm. when you young you don't you don't understand that your mama understand until you get older so until right. I got like 15 16 that's when I started telling my mama everything I was doing and shit like that because I still wanted her to know I ain't just want she was gonna hear about it anyways because mm -hmm. she in the streets but I still didn't want her to be blindsided by nothing so I started telling her shit like yeah mom I'm, I'm doing this this going on this going on now the last time that you went to jail what would you say really what was it that really made you straighten up, like especially with your mindset to not go back? Really, it was it was a couple months ago. We was uh, we was at the Future concert type shit. Mm -hmm. I was high as hell, I was lean and shit, just tweaking, and you know, just some some weird shit happened, and it just made me focus up. Like, nah, like that's why I, don't, I ain't sipping no drink right now. Like, I just smoke weed because. Drink really like I don't sip drink. I really drink drink like I'm a drink. You be chugging it, huh? You I don't be, be chugging it, but like, man, I might drop a six or something and <laughs> be cool. But it was the future concert. We was vibing. this future. We tweaking. We vibing. I'm back there with the superstars and shit. So then I was just getting. I was on some real rapper type time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't be on. You only can be on real rapper type time. What is real rapper time? Like what? Real is rapper that? type time? Yeah. Like you just everything. You just moving correctly like mm -hmm. meaning like when you pop out you ain't smoking none of that you going a to b you getting to your destination doing what you got to do then leaving i wasn't on that like when i first started rapping i was just on some like fuck it um i'm the neighborhood hero and that type shit i'm that nigga i'm getting in still driving the stolen cars and all that shit like it took it took like damn shorty you you fucking rapping what you doing in the stolen car you can go buy this car was you like, in the stolen cars even when you had a buzz around the city hell yeah like that was the thing like we when you get a buzz around the city it don't really change nothing like you mm -hmm. really like you just more of a superstar and you just gotta move better that's all and i ain't i ain't understand until like for real, for real, until I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, three, four months back, we in stolen cars every day just doing stupid shit. Like, just just dumb shit. Like, mm -hmm. you had to get used to it, and then that's when I'm like, damn, I understood. Like, I'm thinking, like, if I just rap, and I'm just gonna keep going up, ooh, ooh, and then you start understanding, like, this shit bigger than just rap. Like, your yeah. appearance matter. Like, I was getting fat, drinking drink, all type of shit. It was, it was a lot of shit, like, and then it was just like, and I wasn't dropping no music at the time, so. When you ain't dropping no music, you just really just making music and chilling with the guys and chilling with your family. Mm -hmm. We were just doing a lot of shit and it just took like, probably like the last six months since January, like, all right, you a rapper, sit the fuck down. Like, so now I just been moving better, just moving. And I, it's really who you got around you too. Mm -hmm. I had to cut certain niggas off like, you still on this street type time. I'm still on that, like you play, it's that. But I ain't on that, I'm just on some trying to feed my family type shit for real. I like that, you know, you got you got your head on right, you understanding how it go now. Yeah. Cause getting in trouble, especially when you have a buzz, that shit can set you back a little bit. And that's all I was thinking. I'm in the cell like my A and I finna be mad at me. Um my mama finna be mad well, what at me. When they found out you was locked up, what did they say? They they wasn't really tripping because uh -huh. they like the charges woo. Now if it was something real, but I, I'm I got a good team behind me that I know like even if I go to jail or something, I know like they still gonna fuck with me regardless. Mm -hmm. Like, but it's still just like everybody around me taking a chance on me. So why the fuck would I fuck that up? Like, yeah. th that's just silly. That's crash dummy shit, and I ain't never been no crash dummy. So I just got it together. But shit, they like, what you you try to? I don't. But I never even asked them like how they felt like when I got booked. Uh, I talked to them like, ooh, uh -huh. like all right, what happened? They just be checking on me when I go to court and shit now. Like, little shit. So, we ain't really tripping, man. We just finna get this money and keep going up. And I know that's right. <laughs> now, with you, um, how would you say your journey has been with music? With music? Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna say it was sweet, because I put in a lot of hard work, but I feel like if you work, you gotta work. Like, even when I wasn't dropping music, I still was working. And your music might not even come out to two years later, or it might not blow up to two years later. You mm -hmm. just gotta put the work in and just stay. Stay committed and just be be faithful to the ground. Like be disciplined. You ain't you ain't gonna get nowhere if you ain't disciplined. So that's what I be telling niggas. Like niggas be like, for I want to rap. I want to do this. I want you don't want to rap for real because you ain't ready to sit in the studio from three to two a.m. And even if you make no songs, you still gotta sit in there because it might be twelve o'clock and you might catch a vibe and you've been in the studio all day. Like I done sat in stew sessions like just going through beats all day. But mm -hmm. who really want to do that? You gotta really be committed 
to what you want to do for real. A lot, of, a lot of these niggas ain't committed, and that's what separates you because it ain't hard. Like yeah. you just gotta work for real. It ain't hard. So how would you describe your work ethic, or what does that even look like for you? I work at it. Mm-hmm. Shit, me really. Even if I'm, even when I'm not making music, I'm writing music type shit. So like, I go to the studio, just work. I don't even know how to explain it. Like, I, <laughs> it's like it's it, it's it's easy for me, but it ain't easy at the same time because you still don't feel like getting up, but you gotta get up because. Uh, your manager can't make the music for you, and then I ain't gonna lie, the females probably the biggest distraction. What? The females? Oh, uh, let's let's it's, hear it's, why you think they are the biggest distraction. The females? Yeah. Cause they want time, man. And then <laughs> I ain't got no time. Like I only yeah. got time for a girlfriend. Like they want time. You know, if, what your man want? What you want from your man? You want time, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, I think everybody would want time with their significant other. But I ain't got time for myself. I don't even be having time to do stuff that I want. Like, cause then like, when you don't give people time, they get to thinking different. And your family will get to thinking different. Like they'll think you just got it all figured out. I'm mm-hmm. still, I'm still young. Like it come with it. Like you gotta get used to it, but I'm still adapting to it. Like I still be having to call my grandma and check on her. I got little sisters, siblings and shit. I still gotta call them and check on them. It ain't enough hours in the day for everybody. Yeah. So with the girls, um, have you at least tried to have a situation going on while you've been balancing your rap career? I tried to, but she what? wasn't she wasn't ready for it. <laughs> what? Like, what happened? Like it just be like, say we shoot a video. Right. We shoot a nah, say this. Fans in the comments. If a fan comments some some hard ass or something, I like the comment. Like, boom, or I probably oh I I'll probably put the flame emoji under it. You got to be ready to understand the, the situation that your nigga in. If you ain't ready to understand that, it's going to be a hundred females coming at him every day. I ain't got time to steady be explaining who is this and who is that and who is that. So it, it just, it don't, it don't, I don't know. It's like you got to have a, a strong female that's like that understand. Or you got to have a female that's just as busy as you. Mm-hmm. I need a female just as turned as me and just as busy because... If you sitting in the house all day, you gonna be thinking about what I'm doing all day. I ain't got time to be answering the phone and explaining my, I don't explain myself to people. Like, <laughs> what? You know what's going on. Like, why did you ask me who is this or who is that? I don't, I hate that. Like, I just can't, I can't do it right now. Or I just gotta find somebody that fit me. Maybe I've been looking in the wrong places cause everybody I call, they be bugging. Like, like, and I call and like, come in at the crib. This they hate, I come in like late. Kyle, they be like, you ain't talked to me in two oh, days. Oh, this is the girls, this is what they say to you. Yeah, they be mad, because like, I don't, I don't want to sit on FaceTime all day. When I call, just be ready. That's it. Yeah, it seems like, uh, yeah, the girls right now is just, it's not giving. Yeah, the girls ain't giving right now. <laughs> but speaking of women, um, you did make a song and you mentioned Blazing Doll in the song. Yeah, so <laughs> that's phone number though. <laughs> so talk about that. What happened after you did that? Was it like a bunch of controversy or? Yeah, it really, it really went viral. It, it, it made us drop the song. Like I never really cared about the song. This who, this Huncho, he, I mean Blue Nose, he, he made the beat, but like we never thought it was gonna do that. So what, what really happened was it was two girls that was mentioned in the song, but the first one I ain't say her name because we a little cougar, but Cause she what? Because we kind of cool, like oh, you feel okay. me? like I don't like what what future say I got relationships with all my bitches. Yeah, yeah, I'm, t- <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you for real, but man, long story short. Shorty, the first one went live in my crib type shit. So when she went live in my crib, then she put me in one of her interviews and dropped my name. You can't be doing it if we got this going on on the side. You fit in, we both rap. So boom, the fans get the comment like, you hitting that, woo. So it was on my mind. Then the guys was calling me like, boy, you hitting that, boy. She steady saying your name, woo. So it wasn't me. So like, you was trying to keep it private. I was trying to keep it private. It was her. Boom, and then with the blazing thing, the blazing thing wasn't really nothing. Like it was something, but it really wasn't nothing because she in tour with a girl from our hood. So mm-hmm. I really wasn't on that. Like I ain't messy. I don't be with none of that shit. It just was on my mind because it hit the blogs. So if me and you got something going on and it hit the blogs and it don't and I ain't tell nobody, you had to tell somebody. So I just ended up making a song about it. But the song really overall just about <laughs> females be bapping. Like when you start rapping, uh-huh. they want the clout. Like. 
they gonna get to saying like, oh, he used to fuck with me in 2012. He wanted me during this time. Ooh, you wouldn't be saying this if I wasn't a rapper or I wasn't who I am. So it just be little shit. But the females, you gotta watch them. They be running their mouth more than niggas, for real. <sighs> shit, I mean, I ain't got nothing to say. Hmm? <laughs> Cause you know, you know. You probably got some friends that in call you like, this rap nigga in my DM, he just duh, 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 duh. That's what y'all do. Y'all better start passing out them NDAs. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I got a homie who make bitches sign NDAs. He don't play any, like, but, need, but I had to get used to it, cause at first, like, it's cool, like, when you a regular, I always had the female, so, boom. But now, my manager don't play. We taking phones. Y'all We doing yeah. everything. We taking phones, ain't no pictures. Um, you gotta, you gotta slide up in vanish mode, vanish mode, <laughs> yeah. That's what we do it, I'm telling you. Vanish mode that, that's what we do You gotta vanish mode everything. I gotta vanish mode everything. And if, you, and if it say, I don't wanna hear it, uh, Instagram tweaking it, accidentally took a screenshot, I'm not replying no more, right? If I slide up and we just on some, and we, you might not even be a, a vanish mode female, but mm -hmm. I got, I don't know that. I gotta get to know you to know like, you ain't on that type of time, but. Females in that type of town. FaceTime, camera off, all that. FaceTime, so why you FaceTiming if you're going you to end up turning the camera off? We don't, we, don't, we don't talk on phones. Mm -mm. Ah, okay, yeah. All right. Say no more. For real. <laughs> uh, so back to getting into your music, what would you say was like the hardest thing for you starting out? The hardest thing for me? Yeah. Just I, like, ain't, I ain't, I ain't want to be no trap like a drill artist. Like, yeah. Like I, I started off making, I started off making like different type of music type shit, mm -hmm. and then Fulton was telling me because uh, Polo did it, Dirk did it, a majority, Lizzie, majority of the people that like come up in our city, they get on off drill, and mm -hmm. then they probably switch it over. So they like just come drill. So the first drill song I made was Wicked and Rack. That's the song that like went up first. For mm -hmm. real. Song got my buzz. That shit hit four million views. Yeah, four million. Woo, that thing went crazy. So have you always knew like G Herbo even since you were younger, since y'all grew up in like the same hood or? Yeah, for sure. Like uh -huh. even before like I was like off the porch, you ride down the block, you would see Herb. Um, you would just see the guys, it's, just, it's regular. Like it's regular, you gonna see them outside. Like Herb always been one of them rappers who's really outside. So you gonna see Swerve. You can't say you been in Ted Town and you never seen G Herbo. Like mm -hmm. that's why. So with that one, I'm sure you expected it to do the numbers that it did. Nah, I didn't. You didn't? I used to smoke the remix? Yeah, the remix. Nah, the remix, I'm like, I asked my man, I'm like, what you think this motherfucker gonna do? He like, it might do a million in a month. That motherfucker did a million in five days. <laughs> he like, it might do a million in a month. I'm like, damn, a million in five days? That's turn. All right, so you know we gotta ask you, at what age did you officially jump off the porch? It wasn't no age. Like, for real, for real, I swear, like, I used to be like five, six years old. When you growing up, you're going to adapt to what you see. Mm -hmm. So I already was adapting, but like my mama a gangster. So like if I ain't used to be watching my mirrors and shit, she'll smack the shit out of me. Like if I wasn't paying attention to what was going on, she'll smack the shit out of me. So by the time, <laughs> for real, I'm for real. Like we'll be in the car, she'll be like, what car behind us? I ain't know what car. She'd get on my ass. Oh, like, so she was making sure you was on your P's and Q's. Yeah, you. like five, six years old, for real, for real. And then like I say like, I started doing all the street shit for real, like 13, 14, like 13 and up type shit. But I always knew what was going on and was so advanced because I used to watch everybody above me, like everybody older than me. So by the time I started doing shit, I'm teaching it. I think my homie will tell you, I swear to God I could call him right now, he'll tell you. I, I had him game banging it in like kindergarten. I showed him how to game bang. Like we had a handshake and everything. Like, but I used to just be doing what the older niggas doing. Like, I was the young nigga walking around. I ain't shake up regular, like, just half fat, no. Mm -hmm. We game bang and all that. They used to be like, his little ass gonna be bad as hell. Ooh, <laughs> I was young as hell for real. Yeah. But I never thought about, like, damn, I'm jumping off the porch and no shit like that. It never was like that. I feel like niggas who be like that be planning that shit and thinking about that shit. Like, sometimes it be good. You gotta do what you gotta do. But you just gotta let shit be genuine. I feel like everything that be genuine gonna turn out the way the, the right way it's supposed to be for your life. Like, mm -hmm. Don't be playing it. And the niggas who be jumping out, don't jump off late. Niggas be jumping out the porch late and getting killed and they mama like, oh my God, my son was a good baby and da 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 But she don't know he didn't diss this person in this video or 
doing this and a lot of parents be finding out late about what their kids be doing. Yeah, they definitely do. Dang, that was a good point to touch because you know, sometimes we do hear people jump off the porch. They say they jumped off the porch like hella late. Yeah. And I feel like when you jump off a little late, you don't really know, like, it's that a That shit don't fly in Chicago. Yeah. You gonna, you gonna, you gonna have to adapt quick, because in Chicago, you can't walk around, smack, you jump off the porch late, you got a gun, motherfuckers gonna, his ass a goofy, fuck is he doing? <laughs> like, no, like, I like jumping off the porch late shit, like, you talking about you 18 and game bang, and niggas gonna look at you like goofy. For real, for real. I think that's what COVID did, though. It made a lot of niggas start game banging that one game banging and shit. COVID did a lot of shit. Like, I ain't gonna lie, the men are a little bit. Y'all a little mean now. Yeah. You say we mean? Little, yeah, y'all a little Niggas, feisty. you know why niggas mean? Niggas touched that little 20K. That's how. <laughs> that's how they mean. They touched that little 20K. They feel it themselves. That's how. <laughs> now, uh, getting into Wicked in the Rack, um, right here behind you, this is the producer that was Blue Nose. behind it. Yeah, Blue Nose. How you feeling? So, with the creative process, like, what did that look like? The creative process? Mm hmm. With that. Really? Oh, go on. You wanted to? I was in my house. I was even thinking about someone rapping on that shit. Like, just making that shit in my crib. I didn't even think someone was going to grab it on YouTube. He just grabbed it off YouTube. I seen it on my phone. I'm just like, probably some little shit. Mm hmm. I seen the video. And I'm just like, damn, it's serious. But you're not playing. And that how hard. Nah, for and sure. So, with that single and you putting G Herbo on there, what was y'all's dynamic like? Um, Herb always knew about me and I always knew about Herb because mm -hmm. he, he real cool with my older brother. So, they like, that sturdy little brother, that J Dog little brother. So, he heard the song because I was getting the buzz around the city and the song was going up. So, he just DM'd me, like, send me the song, I'm going to do it. Ooh, he did that motherfucker. He sent it. It really was the 4th of July. I was outside, I was on the block. I'm happy as hell. I'm bored. Herb just jumped on this bitch. I'm running around showing all the guys like what well, Herb just jumped on this bitch. But it was busting and then shit, we just locked it in from there. Shit, if I need some advice or something, I could call him. Mm -hmm. Even like he tell me do this, do that. Like he had, he got a lot of advice on my project. Like he really, he 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 uh co-producing my project, so he gonna. Have oh wow. A, yeah, he gonna have a lot to do with it for sure. That shit gonna be crazy. Yeah, for sure. And I saw um, On Site, which you dropped in 2022. Yeah. So would you say 2022 was like the year that you kind of just went all in and started taking everything serious? Yeah, I, I say that's when I started taking it serious. Because mm -hmm. that's when I seen like, once, once you get Chicago reacting to you, and this was like way before I even caught a real buzz. So it, at that time when I made On Site, people were like, oh, he rapping. He just doing anything. Like, he just rapping. Ooh, ooh. And then once you go up, that's near everybody like, Oh, I knew he was. I knew you was gonna make it. I told you you had it. Da, 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 da. They be lying. They really <laughs> just be bandwagon. Um, do you think Chicago's like a tough crowd when it comes to music? Yeah, it is a tough crowd. Cause if you ain't did no street shit, you, they gonna say something. If you, if you, if if you like, let me see. I don't know. If you got some baggage on your name, it's gonna come out. But that was the main thing about people telling me to rap. I I started off rapping cause I went to the studio with my homie. He just mm -hmm. telling me like. You can rap before you like you ain't lying. He like everything you going through and he like you got the image. He like you got the image. He like the hoes love you. Like you can rap. Like whatever you do, the city gonna fuck with. And that was a good thing. I already had my city before I started rapping. Like I ain't have it like the west side and nothing like that. But out south and over east, mm -hmm. everybody everybody know Nunu. Like you know Nunu. If you don't know Nunu, you ain't outside for real. So how do you feel like right now in this moment, especially like you in the then four million views is going fucking crazy. Like I feel like you, it's you, yeah, you on your way. Yeah, for sure. I'm 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 that next one. If if not right now, I'm for sure the next one. A lot a lot of people know that. And then in Chicago, it's still like you still gotta win them over. Like I'm still winning Chicago over because it's mm -hmm. still people, other fans of other people. It's still people that never heard of me. So I'm still working. But right now, in the future. I'm I'm that one. Yeah, I feel like it's like a whole new wave coming out of Chicago right now. It is, but it's really dry. Like the females got it right now. Like the females got it. The females going they crazy going so right now. crazy the right now. Got, it's only let me see. Yeah, it's only it's only I say it's probably two people. You know what it is though? What? And I'm giving some game. So I think right now with the females, like they making music that girls can actually 
Turn shake up too. ass yeah, too. Shake ass like too. you know, we be in the clubs. Like we haven't had this type of music in a minute. Like everything been real. Like you know, mm. for the guys to vibe out with. But now the girls is coming in. Like boom. And I think I think that's why um, the pillow talk song went up. Like the, yeah, the shit with the black because. They saying it's catchy, like mm -hmm. females calling me like, boy, I love this song. <laughs> and if you look in the comments and stuff, it's a lot of females. So anything female driven is going to go like, it, yeah, that's probably like that motherfucker snippet got 100K. And that's the most. It I got heard it that whole crazy. Yeah, it's for sure crazy. Like, but it was on accident, though. Like, I swear it was on accident. How is it on accident? Because it was on accident. I'm literally doing what I regularly do. I wake up, get high, chill, talk to a couple people. Mm -hmm. Then I get to playing some beats, and Blue Note sent me the beats. Like I always go through his beats first, so I just went through and heard the beat. Um, I just beat some shit up. I hit a mouse with two girl. I knew it was viral out the jump. <laughs> I called phone them like, boy, hey boy, you ain't never finna go record that. Um, boy, I'm finna go record it right now. I recorded it, but I did upload a snippet on my page. But I deleted it in five minutes. That's not the snippet that got screen recorded. The snippet that got screen recorded is the live. So yeah, I saw the the live snippet. Yeah. So that's the snippet that like went up. But it did what it did. I'm glad it did what it did. It's just like another stepping stone. But I don't want the females. Don't think I be out here kissing and tugging because I don't. They they said something first. A lot of females <laughs> will tell you like, oh, we know Nunu don't kiss and tell. He ain't even like that. Like I ain't like that for real. <laughs> I'm glad you, you know, you talk, you let the people know. Oh, yeah, you for sure got to let them know because <laughs> it's probably some females I had that want me that's probably like, damn, he be running his mouth. I don't run my mouth for real. They said something first. Like, they said something to well. The guys, once the guys get the call with me, like, boy, who said this? It's over with. Like, it's out there. Now, you recently dropped Emergency Room back in May. Um, so, with that single, what would you say was, like, the inspiration with that? The single? Yeah. Shit, I got, I, I got shot. And, mm -hmm. some, and some shit happened. That, that's all this real. I got shot, and then it ain't even, it ain't even by for by correctly how everything happened. It's just I got shot. That was inspiration. It just came to my head. And what's crazy is I was just like snuck out the mercy room when I got hit. Well, damn, this shit. I was here. I just went to go <laughs> record it. Like it be simple. That's why I say like the blades and stuff. Everything. It don't be an accident. It be me working, but. I never meant to like. Oh, I'm gonna make a song about these females. No, it just it just happened. So I do want to ask because when I was looking through your catalog, I saw we don't got a project yet. Yeah, nah, we ain't got one. We got one dropping for sure. Like ten bangers. Like the the, the project crazy right now that we taking songs off. Like I just I just recorded something new last night. We took it off. Like we took something off. Like nah, we gonna put this up there. It might be more than ten songs though. We still going over it because it's a lot of raw shit on there. Like and we ain't just no. We gonna say like nah, that shit weak. Yeah. Like, so we really got like 10 hard ass songs like right now. With this being like the debut project that you drop, is it a little pressure on which songs to put on there and which ones to take off? Ain't no pressure for real because I'm just rapping. I'm just doing, I'm just rapping. But we do like want to let everybody know like I got a song on there that's bop for bop. People don't know I can do bop for bop. So we like, we going J. Cole might hear this shit. Kendrick Lamar might hear this shit. We really just want to put it out there like, oh, this, this young nigga hard, like mm -hmm. he don't need nobody for real. Cause yeah. the Herb song, boom, you do a meal, you know what they gonna say, oh, he did it with Herb, da, 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 da. No, Big Bro called me to ask me to get on that song. He knew that <laughs> bitch was rough. So you know, it's yeah. like, now it's just like, we finna let the world know like, this young nigga hard, like, and it's just, it's a lot of music. Like, it's back, I swear every song, you gonna be like, damn, play this back, or oh, I wanna hear this, or oh, I wanna hear that. It's hard for real. And I'm I'm hard on myself. I don't just drop anything. Niggas be dropping anything and be thinking that shit hard. Shit yeah. don't be hard. Now with you coming from Chicago and taking the opposite route of drill and even trap, um, did you feel like it did kind of take you a little longer to like blow up or I started rapping? I start I made my first song called Intro. It's like a dedication to my big cousin Rock. It's called Rock Rock Bug Intro. Mm -hmm. I made that song in like November. I never knew nothing you had to buy a beat or nothing. I made that song the hood got right behind me. Then I'm like, I do my homework. I'm like, damn, this shit ain't, this shit ain't selling. Like, like, and then I just caught a different vibe. So when I caught a different vibe, I'm like, I bet I probably had two songs out for real. Then I made Wicked in the Right, and from there it was it was bust, for real, for real. And everything on YouTube. So don't think I'm lying. You could go on YouTube and see. And I got like eight songs out for real. Now, what else would you tell the people? 
um, if they didn't know you or they getting familiar with you today on our porch. If they don't know me, mm -hmm. just don't judge a book by its cover. I hate when people like walk up to me and, bro, don't walk up to me and tell me no street shit you did, bro. I don't care. And then stop just walking up and just thinking like I'm just this over dumbass street nigga just on some super savage tough shit all the time. Y'all just gotta get to know me. I'm really cool. A lot of the savages and niggas who really be street niggas don't walk around mad all day. The niggas who be walking around mad all day really be hoes and just angry at the real, for real. I like that. Yeah, for, for sure. I hate that, like, people- People be walking up to you telling you that they street shit, niggas and shit? Yes, like, for I just went through this, for this happened to me, for in reality, for if it's music, I don't care what you did. Like, if you paying for a song, bro, I don't care if you grinding this shit or not. Like you, you paying me. Like I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear no street shit you did because I'm not gonna ever tell you no street shit I went through. Like that's yeah. stupid. Now your label, Get Money in Silence. Let's talk about that. Yeah. I you wanna know what I had came? How it really came was we was gonna do Never Leave My Brothers, No Limit Them Be. Mm -hmm. Then my brother called me. He like. He like, nah, he like, that's the same shit really is, is Herb. He like, you your own artist, go ahead, do your own shit. So I named it Get Money in Silence, and then I wanted, I wanted it to be neutral. Like, mm -hmm. you hear certain shit like um, gang and this gang, and then you got to think about this shit. I ain't just thinking music. I could take my corporation into acting, into construction. Mm -hmm. Motherfuckers don't want to hear no gang gang construction company. That's <laughs> stupid as hell. I can yeah. just name my shit. GMS construction company get and I be I be telling other people that like what bro like nah you got to make this shit neutral because at the end of the day music don't last forever you might have a mm -hmm. six month run and take your money and put it into something else you want it to be neutral because you want it to attract people you don't want I feel like getting money in silence is gonna tell you everything I need to you need to know about me like if I'm getting money in silence everything why would I do any street shit out loud like exactly exactly. Now, uh, uh, with the label, do you have any artists up under you or anybody, anybody else? Yeah, I got artists. I'm full of them. Shout out, shout out Full God. Um, shout out Trey Money. Who else? Um, who else I be pushing a lot? Um, that's really it. Yeah, who else? Damn. Full God. Somebody gonna be mad at me. I be pushing a lot of guys <laughs> and they, and they, yeah. they under me. Somebody gonna be mad. Damn. But it's, I, I got my eye on a lot of little people, or I be like, I got an ear, so I might send mm -hmm. something to my manager or my A&I, like, this hard, or sign this. All right, so what would you say is next for you outside the project that you're going to be dropping soon? What's next? Just, um, just learning how to network, learning um, when you walk in rooms, how to talk to certain people, stuff like yeah. that. Because I still, I still uh, come off as like, as I'm in Chicago and shit, and they be saying we be aggressive. So that's really what I'm, I'm really just trying to fix a lot of shit outside the music, like mm -hmm. just networking and just knowing how to talk to people and just understanding relationships bigger than money. Cause me growing up, I pay for everything. I'm not, I don't got time to fake no relationship with you. I just pay you to go do this song or do this like that. But now it's just like, it's so much, and I learned like a lot of this shit be fake. You can't, you wouldn't believe the shit these niggas be doing like, a lot of this shit be fake, so it just be like, I just be trying to, if I'm locked in with you, we gonna lock it in, mm -hmm. shit like that. Just really just networking. A lot of stuff you do outside the music gonna make the music go up even more. Yep. Yep, for sure. Now, we gonna end this interview off with you giving some game or advice to the youngins that may be looking up to you. Um, advice I got is um, don't get tricked out your spot. Like, don't let the old niggas trick you. Um, Whatever you doing, if you if you gonna be in the streets, be in the streets. Just do it the right way. Don't be no crash dummy. If you gonna be in the streets, your number one priority should be to get out the streets and get some and, and get some money to get out the streets. The whole thing of being a gangster and all that shit was to get some money. Niggas be out here broke as hell on the block 24/7, just with a gun, lint pockets. Like, just get some money. Whatever you gonna do, get some money. And get out this shit and just don't get tricked out your spine. If you're gonna do something, just do it the right way.